Hi, I'm, I'm Scott Leslie. Uh, I'm from uh, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. I work with a group called uh, BC Campus. Um, so my story actually starts, um, for me, quite far back in my blogging career, uh, uh, 2003. Um, I was leading a, a workshop on using blogs uh, in education, and I think it was a you know reasonably early uh, attempt to uh, to talk about that. And uh, so we were actually trying to facilitate that with blogs, and uh, it was going okay. But I think you know it was early enough that people were not quite getting what we were on about, um, and uh, so uh, and. This was a two or three week long uh, seminar we were doing online, and in the middle of it, I just had this sort of flash came into my head of a way to depict, um, you know, different ways that students and, and instructors could use blogs in sort of formal education, and so uh, very quickly came up with this uh, uh, diagram. I'm, I'm not artistically inclined, so to speak, and so. I ended up using, uh, of all things, Microsoft Word to do this diagram that I titled uh, The Matrix of Blog Uses in Education. And uh, so I posted it for the, uh, um, uh, the, the seminar we were leading, and I also posted it on my blog. And um, it, it, it seemed to really uh, resonate with some folks, and, and it, it quickly became you know, the thing that I had written that was getting the most links and references to. And so that was, that was pretty satisfying. But so the, the first... Um, uh, you know, amazing story of reuse, at least amazing to me, was um, uh, the number of people, and there was probably at least six in the first uh, two years or so, who um, took the initial diagram and either redid it um, to, with much nicer graphics and a much nicer layout, but basically keeping the same structure that I come up with. And then shared that back through their own blogs and linked back to the story, or or else um, took it and translated it into different languages. And so I ran across an Italian, a Spanish version, a Dutch version, and so you know uh, this really kind of tickles you when you you know have created something that really resonates with people and that they take it and run with it. Um, and if that was all that had happened, that would you know I think be enough. I would be quite pleased with that. But this. Um, this is an amazing story of openness, and so um, the amazing bit for me came when, uh, sort of out of the blue, I got this email from a guy uh, in the UK called Tony Lowe. Tony was uh, uh, quite the uh, the Flash expert, and uh, so he had taken the Matrix and basically redid it as a Flash app, um, so that you had the sort of the axes, but you could actually see the the uh, the different uses and place them in the different quadrants on the matrix, and he just sort of said, "I hope this is okay." I I I, I was kind of inspired by your diagram, and I, I turned it into this flash app. You know, it sent it to me, and you know, was I okay with it? Well, I I was overjoyed, and so I I promptly blogged it and and pointed people to it, saying, "You know, look, you share this, and this is what happens." And in blogging it, I also made a few comments, just my own feedback. You know, this is fantastic, and wouldn't it be great if you could, in fact, make this interactive so other people could actually add new uses to place on this matrix and, and sort of use it as a teaching tool uh, and a brainstorming tool. And sure enough, uh, probably eight months later, again, so no no conversations with Tony, just this blog post that I write, reflecting back on what he's done, thanking him for his work, and um, off we go, and eight months later I get another email saying, you know, that was a good idea you had, and so I, t I, I ran with it, and so here's the interactive version of this, uh, um, and in fact, we've gone further, we've actually developed a, 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 an authoring tool for creating uh, you know, not just this matrix, but actually many other different types of, you know, educational flash animations, and the the matrix of blog uses in education became one of their sort of uh, examples that's still to this day on their website. And so, uh, this new version allows you to, uh, you know, uh, start off with a blank matrix that's sort of reading and writing blogs as the quadrants, um, and then type in new ones and drag them onto the screen and uh, so I've in fact then used that uh, in workshops with people where we've talked about sort of you know pedagogical and educational uses of, of um, 
of uh, blogs in the classroom. And so, so what ended up being sort of, uh, you know, me sharing uh, this really crappy Word document has turned into um, what for me is an amazingly uh, sophisticated, uh, you know, uh, flash um, uh, tool, tool to, to sort of dynamically brainstorm with people what are the different uses they could make of blogs in education. And so. Uh, and I've never met Tony. Um, you know, I, I'm extremely grateful for what he did. He didn't pay me anything to do it. I didn't pay him anything. It was basically done out of, you know, passion and interest and uh, facilitated by openness. I spent my entire career online, right? And I'm basically self taught in many of the areas that I work in. And um, the only reason I could be self taught is because of this. Uh, incredible sharing that's always been there long before the Creative Commons even came along, right? You know, you know this as well as I do. They, you know, the internet was based on people sharing what they'd done uh, and demonstrating it. And so, um, you know, for me, the fact that it was publicly on my website was enough to basically say, you know, take it, use it. That's what it's there for. And and uh, you know, as as Brian Lamb likes to say about the Creative Commons license, like putting the license on it was basically just a pledge that I am not a jerk. <laughs> I won't sue you if you use this. I do think there are things you can do that will sort of enable the serendipity to happen uh, more often than not, right? And a lot, you know, some of those things are, are specific things. So, I mean, you can share stuff that's more easy to take apart and share stuff that's sort of more you know, obvious what the components are and, and share in nice web formats and stuff. Um, but then also part of it is just being a good web citizen, right? Um, you know, uh, it, you know if, if your expectation is, you know, you set up a blog, you create a one blog post and then sit back and wait, well, you know, it, it's hard to explain to people and it is hard uh, when people are first getting started. This is a, a long-term investment in your sort of online identity and practice and uh, so all of the comments you leave on other people's blogs all the links that you make to their posts uh, you know all of all of the, the the work that you do as a good you know uh, network learner and web citizen are leading up to enabling that serendipity that's what makes it happen so that you know when somebody types in you know blog use in education and you're the first hit, not the 900th. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's not a question of just share it once and then and sit back and hope. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes people come up with a fantastic piece of work that just resonates right off the bat. But often it's about you know creating that relationship in the the overall sort of you know blogosphere and the ecosystem of people online.